I'm Jackie and welcome to my magical home. I hope that you are ready for some creative homemaking today because it is time for movie night. You know I love these videos and I can't wait to share today's with you because we are blasting through the past to have a dino inspired evening because Jurassic Park has put out another into their amazing franchise. I am obviously an old school fan. They came out when I was little and I mean when I was in the third grade Jurassic Park was all legit. So I was really excited when a new video came out because I knew that it would give me this opportunity. I've got lots of recipe ideas for you. I've got a really cool DIY prop idea for you that is super easy to make but looks really impressive. And I hope that you will consider sticking around and checking out today's video as well as hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already before. Anyways, let's go ahead and get today's fun started. So this is just a quick sneak peek into our menu today. As you can see, I have tons planned. But as always, I'm going to start out with my dessert first. So we are going to use some pre-made cookie dough. I'm going to use a cleaned dinosaur toy and use some cooking spray on the bottom of its foot and use it to make little footprints into these sugar cookies. Then I'm coming over it with cinnamon to give it that kind of dirt-like look and I'm going to let them cook. But as you can see, total fail! The footprints did not turn out at all but luckily round two we were able to fix it up I brought back out that dinosaur and I put those footprints back on and then I came over with just a little bit of luster dust powder so that it would just kind of accentuate the footprints themselves I thought that these turned out really cute maybe not as I had originally planned but I don't honestly ever use this kind of pre-made dough and so given the circumstances I'm incredibly happy with this. Let me know if you guys decide to try this. Best part, super easy, right? Okay, so time for dessert number two. We are going to be making some volcano brownies. I have a mold that I had already purchased long ago, but I will make sure to try and link it down below. And I just used dark chocolate Gerardelli brownie mix and went ahead and cooked those up. The big trick if you're going to use that kind of mold that I want to tell you is make sure to let them cool entirely. That way the volcanoes themselves don't break. After that I have some orange, yellow, and red candy melts that I'm going to melt together so that I can kind of swirl the colors together. And we're going to use that to create lava on top of all of these little volcano brownies. Again, an incredibly simple dessert, but something that I felt was very impactful and I mean, it tastes great. It's a Gerardelli brownie, right? Okay, so our desserts are done and it is time to cut up our watermelon. Now I start by cutting off the top one third of the watermelon and setting that aside. And then I'm just going to literally come through with my cookie scoop and ball out all of this watermelon. It takes a little bit and I do go ahead and dump out some of the juice off camera, but I feel like this was so incredibly fun. So after we have got all of this watermelon scooped out, I'm gonna show you exactly how I carved this into being a dinosaur watermelon. I felt like this was just the epitome of cute and the best part is it's a super healthy treat as well.
I did go ahead and use toothpicks to stabilize this head onto the bottom of the watermelon and I filled up the actual little boat, I guess, of watermelon before I added the tail so that it wasn't off balance too much. After that, I brought in just a little bit of other fresh fruit and added that to the bottom of my tray. Let me know what you guys think of today's watermelon T-Rex. Now it is time to cook up some chipotle compi crumbles. Now, what is a compi? They are those adorable little dinosaurs. I think you see them in either Jurassic Park 2 or 3, and they kind of look like chickens and they hunt in a pack. And I thought, what better to depict the chicken in my chipotle chicken crumbles that I make for tacos and nachos normally. And so we switched up to be chipotle compi crumbles. So. We're gonna be adding one pound of ground chicken to this, two tablespoons of pureed chipotle peppers and ancho sauce, one tablespoon of finely diced garlic, one finely chopped shallot, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of cilantro paste or a small handful of freshly chopped cilantro, the juice from one lime as well as salt and pepper. You guys, I think you're gonna love these. Let me know if you try them out and what you think. Okay, now it's time for the pièce de résistance as far as the food. It is time for the nacho bean dip volcano. So we're going to start out with two different sized mason jars, and I'm just basically stacking them on top of each other, but I want that smaller mason jar on top to be able to be removed. So I'm just going to kind of come around and build in my volcano shape with some aluminum foil that I picked up from Walmart, and I'm just going to set the mood. We are going to make a little spot, kind of like almost a little indented pond that we're going to set to the side to, for our sour cream, and just basically cover this area and get it ready to create that volcano fun. So there are multiple things that we are going to be adding to create this nacho bean dip volcano today, but I want to start out by showing you how I cook up some black beans from just a can of black beans. This is a super easy way to just kind of have something for the side, and we're going to be using them to add a little texture to our dirt and add some rocks in today. So anyways, we are going to be using one shallot finely diced, one teaspoon of garlic, one tablespoon of pureed green chili, and one can of black beans, cumin, I didn't actually measure that. I, I think it was probably about half a teaspoon if I'm guessing, and then salt to taste. You guys just kind of let them cook for like five to 10 minutes until you notice that the beans get soft and just set them aside. I We actually really enjoy black beans in my home, so this is definitely a go-to. Now that our black beans are done, it is time to start the main beans that we are going to be using for this bean dip today. This is my like absolute favorite instant bean mix. It is made by Mexicali Rose and they are dehydrated refried beans and you guys if you haven't tried these these are as close as you can get to making them from scratch in like a bot form. Um, but they're really easy to make. All you do is put it into your pan, you add two cups of water and you just let it warm up. I like to add an extra tablespoon of pureed green chili to this just to give it a little bit of extra kick. I did make two bags for today and you are going to see why in just a minute. Now, as you can see, we are literally just pouring these beans down the sides of the volcano so that it looks like the dirt on the volcano. We're going to bring in some of those black beans, too, to add some texture there and just cover the whole bottom base of this dip with these beans. And I'm just going to slowly pour them on, trying to make sure that all the areas I want to have covered are covered. I did add a ton of cheese to this before I went ahead and poured them so that I didn't have to add too much on top. That way it was already included in that flavor. So we're going to need some greenery for this volcano, so obviously we're turning to guacamole. Now we have a strip of saran wrap right here, and I'm just going to be putting some different green food dyes on this so that it adds some variation in color to our greenery. And we're just going to put the guacamole dip on top of this 
twirl it together and put this into our piping bag, which today actually is a gallon bag. Now I did attempt to use an icing tip in this. That was a waste of time. Don't even bother guys. Like, because there's too many chunks in guacamole for like, I don't know what I was thinking. But anyways, I'm just going to kind of put this around the base and in different places all over my little volcano bean dip diorama thing here. And just to kind of give it a little bit more color in life. Well, and guacamole, of course. You can't have a good nacho dip without that. Now I want you to get some blue food coloring and we are just going to whip that up with some sour cream here and take that over to our volcano and we have that little indented area. We're just going to fill that up with the sour cream so it creates almost a little lake or a little pool in our topography here. And then we're going to come back up with some black beans and just kind of fill in other areas to just kind of change it up a little bit. After that, it is time to make our nacho lava. And we are going to be using six ounces of chopped Velveeta cheese as well as two to three tablespoons of pureed Rotel with green chili and an additional one tablespoon of just pureed green chili. And I'm just gonna warm that up in the microwave in my small little mason jar that goes on top of that volcano. And then I'm gonna stick it back inside and this baby is ready to go. I can't wait to hear what you think down below. So our food is ready. It is time to start making and talking about our props. Now I actually made these beforehand and if you are going to do this, I, this isn't something that I would do the same day as my food. I would definitely make this beforehand. But when I think of what is iconic for Jurassic Park, obviously the dinosaurs, but what else? The Jurassic Park entrance. So I knew that that is what I wanted to do to have you know, for the background of my food for the movie night tonight. And I absolutely loved a challenge and I love to make different kinds of crafts and activities. You know, some people color, I like to make crafts and props. So I'm gonna show you how to take a piece of black foam board and I'm, we're going to bring it to life and make it into that Jurassic Park entrance. And we're actually gonna do Jurassic World because, you know, it is the Jurassic World installments that are coming out most recently, but it still has that same idea. And I kind of went really all out with this. I had a lot of fun. So I used salt to create some kind of texture into the cement parts, and I kind of scored into the tag board so that it would create kind of wood grain. Anyways, stay tuned. You're gonna love it. We're going to start out by making the gate doors. And now I have this piece of foam board that I used to trace right here. I actually have two of those that I cut off camera. I thought I recorded it, but it would appear I didn't. Anyways, so I cut out two identical pieces in tag board, and then I'm going to use my razor blade to just kind of cut down. I don't want them to be entirely symmetrical um, into four or five slats in each of these pieces. And then I'm going to take my razor blade down these slats and kind of create just a little bit of texture um, and this is going to be my wood grain for these um, and this is going to be the back layer on our door. So once they are all cut I am going to configure them on each of the doors and use glue dots or like glue tape stuff to go ahead and attach them. After that we are going to come in and build the next layer of boards for our door. So I don't actually know a lot about how you build a gate, but I know that there are always those boards around the side and that kind of come through and support in the middle that kind of hold the gate together. So we're, because I wanted to make kind of a 3D version of this today, we are going to make those boards for our door as well. So that is what we're cutting up right now. And I'm going to do the same thing where I come through and add a little bit of texture down through it, but I'm also going to really like kind of accentuate the ends of it because I feel like this is old wood. If we're looking at Jurassic World, how long have these gates been up? there. Now, af I, as I thought about it later, they probably didn't use wood, but it looks like wood, so whatever. Anyways, um, once this is all done, we are going to go ahead and bring in some paint to bring these to life.
and it's time to paint. So I have three colors that I'm going to be using on the door. You will see that I actually try using a sponge and I also try using a paintbrush. I was just trying to get a feel as to what worked the best. Um, I feel like the sponges help to add a really easy layer for that base layer, but to really get the definition that I was looking for, I really wanted that paintbrush look. But Anyways, we used light mocha, wild mushroom, and cafe noir to make this image today. And I am basically creating, I put down a base level and then I just come and start layering the different colors so that it starts to make the wood look a little bit more aged. I would love to hear what you think of my paint job today. And um, if you know a better way to do this, please let me know down in the comments down below. Either way, thanks for chilling and seeing how this all turned out. Don't forget to stay tuned because after we are done building this prop, I'm going to show you how I put together my dinner fun and how it all looked. And you guys, I think you are going to love it. So my gate is drying and now I need to make the structure to hold it up. And to do that, I'm going to start out by making myself a template. And this piece is going to help me cut out both sides of my gate structure and make sure that they match exactly. So I'm going to first cut out the two bottom pieces. And then, so as you can see, there are like three little pieces to these like pillars here. And we are actually going to, to continue with that 3D vibe, cut out three pieces so that it kind of pulls that eye out and helps to create that optical illusion of depth. So anyways, once we cut out our base structure, we're literally just going to cut off one layer at a time of this template and use it to help create this structure. Um, after this is done, we will go ahead and bring in some paint to give them the color that they need. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you, we are also going to create these little half circle pieces and I actually made two for each little thing here and those are going to be our torches and we will finish those up towards the end so you'll see that that's why we don't add paint to those yet. So to paint these, we are going to be using pewter gray, rock gray, and agreeable gray. And then after each layer of paint that I add, I'm going to come in and sprinkle in salt. Now that does make it take a little bit longer for the paint to dry, but when it does, the salt actually stays in the paint and helps it almost give it kind of like a rough concrete feel. Um, so I was really excited about that, but if you don't let it dry all the way, the salt will come directly off. Um, once I added a white layer on the base, that's when I came, it actually wasn't white, but it looks white, right? That, that was the agreeable gray. That's when I came through with the pewter gray and the rock gray, and I used that ocean sponge to just kind of blot it in all over to create just different colors because rocks aren't one solid color, right? Once that's done, we are going to work on our cricket picture here, and this is going to be the actual Jurassic sign. I did buy a piece off of Etsy to make this, but unfortunately it, it didn't work right and I had to do a lot of adjustments for it, so I'm not going to link that down below, but you can find a lot of versions of this on Etsy if you'd like to make this at home. Once our vinyl sticker is put together, we are going to put it on a piece of foam board and cut it out again to give it a little bit more stability. And then we are going to add it to a cross beam piece that we also painted gray to match the gate structures to add our sign and to help create this door and put it together. Now I used packing tape to actually put these pieces together because I felt like it would hold it together best and it would also give my doors the ability to move and I thought that that would be really fun. Now once this is all together we are going to start to add our fire and we are going to use tissue paper in red, orange, and yellow. And I'm just going to kind of trim it up a little bit, squish it together, and tape it on. And then I took those second parts 
part of those circles shaped that I made and I had actually painted those gray as well and I just added them on the front to help complete that torch look. I would love to hear your opinion about my Jurassic Park gate. Please let me know in the comments down below. Now we're going to go ahead and set up our table and I am just going to put up our background prop, add a dinosaur that my daughter let me borrow from when she was little, and then bring in all the food. I would like to point out like the little thing holding the dinosaur scale chips is actually a dinosaur egg that my husband made for me out of paper mache using brown paper bags and a flour mixture. And I feel like it helped to just really add a lot extra to this tablescape today. I would love to hear your opinion, so please don't forget to let me know down below. Make sure to stay tuned, though, because I am going to tell you about where you can find some sources to level this up even more, as well as give you a sneak peek into this month's Bark Box, which is, as you can assume, Jurassic World inspired. I just wanted to pop in here for a second and let you know, check out my Pinterest page where you will find all kinds of dino ideas in case you want to take this to the next level. There were some great game ideas. I really, 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 really wanted to do kind of like a bean bag with that awesome, I think it's a uh, Dilophosaurus that has like the cool little things that come out um, where you like would shove a bean bag into his mouth and make it with tag board. Um, obviously, you know, because this is a movie night for my family, all making props and going all out was kind of a lot already, so we didn't do that. But if you guys are interested in taking that next step, make sure to check out that Pinterest page. The link will be in the description down below. There are tons more ideas than that, and I think that you will really find even more motivation to make your night special. my peeps everything is set up my family is waiting for me and I cannot wait to go join in the fun I hope that this inspires you to have an amazing dino inspired party or event or movie night for yourself or your family let me know what you guys decide to do down below don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so that you know when a new video is coming your way and I cannot wait to see you next time my friends bye